I said, I got to get me a cowbell. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it was Welcome back to the Amanda no. Seal Show, y'all. We talking cowbells and Deion Sanders and Jerry Jones right here with our <laughs> guest, Ms. Jamel Hill, author, journalist, Detroiter, all of the things. Um, Jamel, listen, we talked on the radio show about Deion Sanders, but we came over here to the podcast to just get your thoughts on Jerry Johnson. You wrote about it and you have some strong feelings about it. And I do too. Um, what do you feel like at this point in the conversation, right? Because now it's been out. And LeBron has spoken about, like, why y'all asking me about it, but you ain't asking me, why y'all asking me about Kyrie, but you ain't asking me about this. Um, you know, I think there's definitely the effort. Uh, I don't know if you feel this way, but I do. I feel like they're really trying to just, like, let it be go away. Like, let it be quiet. Like, it's the same way, like, with Brett Favre. Why aren't we still talking about Brett Favre and his Steven ass? Like, why is that not still top top line conversation? Do you feel like the Jerry Jones of it all? the media is not giving it the same breath that they normally do other things at this point. So uh, the, the, the difficult thing um, about uh, the, the difficult thing in assessing what the media makes a big deal out of is, and, and you know, as a member still of the media, I would totally mm -hmm. put uh, my tribe on blast is that we follow the same hierarchical structures that we're supposed to actually hold accountable but we follow the same mm. level of um, like where owners are rarely held accountable in the same way that players are. We go right. for the lowest hanging fruit, which is actually not supposed to be what we do in our job. It's actually the low hanging fruit that we're supposed to, in many ways, provide an offer of protection in different contexts. It is right. the structures that we're supposed to attack, the structure and the power and holding them accountable. So it's sort of like a failed mission, if you will. But the other problem of it, too, is that when you are in an ownership position, as Jerry Jones is, there's no one else within the structure of what you do to actually hold you accountable. Because mm -hmm. like Kyrie, mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving is a player. Like if you want to take what he went through and use that as an example, he's a player. He works for someone else. Someone else signs his check. He has someone else. He has to be held accountable he's a boss. for. Right. Jerry Jones is the boss. And not only is he yeah. the boss, he's arguably the most powerful owner in the NFL, period. He has okay. no boss. So there's okay. no one else to say, hey, Jerry, why don't you, you should be suspended or yeah. you should have to answer that is or whatever it is. There's that discipline's not coming. And particularly among an ownership group where they cover for each other's misdeeds all the time, whether they like each other or not. I mean, you got a whole ass misogynist and Daniel Snyder sitting there as the sort of owner, technically his wife is in charge of the team. And they only did that because it was so much smoke around Daniel yeah. Snyder that they put wifey in charge. But we see Daniel Snyder has been exposed for many horrible, awful things. And he's still sitting in basically an ownership position because the other guys who are just like you aren't going to hold you accountable. And it kind of is what it is. I don't think, listen, I, it wasn't really about the photo. It, it's like it was about the photo, but it wasn't. Jerry Jones's response to the photo was terrible. That, and that to me yes. is what <laughs> got him in this position of criticism because it's not like he said, hey, you know, it was, while it was a different time, you know, it was a bad look. I shouldn't have been there. You guys all you say all that. It's like, I shouldn't have been there. I recognize in the moment I failed. You could come up like you, Jerry Jones. You, you, what you do for, a, I mean, what Jerry Jones, because he's another showman. I mean, he sells ketchup to people uh, with white gloves all the time. It would not have taken anything for him to just own Is that the a phrase? Was, Selling ketchup? It is. I actually got it from um, uh, the movie Tommy Boy. David Spade said it. <laughs> oh, wow, you did. Oh, yeah. For Tommy Boy. For Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy is like, like amazing. I, I love yeah, that movie. I watch it every time. <laughs> like it's on. So, um, yeah, so he all he had to do was own the moment, say where he failed and use it as an opportunity to maybe say something, you know, remotely sort of thoughtful. He didn't do that. He talking about it was curiosity. It's like, bro, Brad, like, you know, like he didn't know, he the cat. you know, well, well, not only that, Amanda, he's trying to act like he didn't know the biggest story of that time was about desegregation. It's like you are in Arkansas. Literally across the road, the Little Rock Nine is happening, but you look across the street. Like <laughs> I mean, it's right there. So yeah. Jerry's like, oh, I didn't know this thing called desegregation was going on. It's like, dude. And the curiosity you know, when I wrote is really just like I'm curious about 
I, I just know that as a, I remember being a 14 year old, like we're conscious, like we're not just like bumbling about looking around, like you're conscious enough to know like, oh, these are kids who are coming to our school. Are we going to be nice or are we going to be mean? So cut it out. Yes. So that it was it was never believable, his explanation. And then where to me, um, what I tried to examine when I wrote about it for The Atlantic is that Jerry Jones has had more than a few opportunities as an NFL yes. owner to be a leader to step out there to yeah. do something that would suggest that that little boy he was in the picture, that they're not the same person, but he's never right. done that. You know, we saw his behavior when Colin Kaepernick took a knee. Mm -hmm. um, he threatened to cut his players uh, if they decided to partake in the protest, even though none of them said they would. He did a flex of power to keep them in their place. Uh, we saw how mm -hmm. he, you know, even beyond, even after that, as you know, he owns a team. He had an opportunity. He could have signed Colin Kaepernick. He had to, at the very least, he could have advocated for somebody like Colin Kaepernick, but he chose not to do that either. And in general, when it comes to the absurd and awful hiring practices in the NFL, when it comes to black head coaches, he could have been a leader in that regard. But no, the Cowboys have one of 13 franchises in the NFL who've never hired a black head coach. Never. So. Mm. And when, you know, he was uh, the only interview we know about um, where he really, I wouldn't even say he didn't even take it seriously. He participated in that whole sham interview process and interviewed Dennis Green for 20 minutes when everybody knew he wanted to hire Bill Parcells. So Jerry right. Jones has had moments to prove he's a different adult and every time he has failed. So <laughs> that's well, an indictment. Yeah, when people show you who they are, believe them. You know, that's just <laughs> what it is. So, well, I, I mean, I just appreciate your thoughts on this. And I think these are the types of stories that get swept under the rug so easily because so often there is other things going on at work. There's ulterior motives, et cetera. But when you talked earlier about how, you know, the job is to actually protect the small folks and, you know, really go at the systems, I think really what that is is about journalists. And there's so few folks that actually hold up the ethical meaning and measure of what journalism really is. And you're one of those folks, which is why you write for the Atlantic and which is why we have you right here on the Amanda Seal Show, yeah. which is why people should buy your book. All right? This they is should why buy people you're should right. buy Uphill, okay? <laughs> if you didn't check out Jamel on uh, Red Table Talk with her mom, you know, she talks a lot about that relationship in this book. And I think a lot of people are just, we've come to love you and respect you because we see that you stand 10 toes down, okay? 10 toes down, okay? This man, Agent Orange, tried to come for Jamel. She was like, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, the, I, the comedy to me is like, you calling out Jerry Jones is racist. I'm like, she has a history. This is what is done. <laughs> we calling out a white man for being racist. This is the thing. This is not the, no I, shit. I, they just give me so much material. I mean, that's part of it. It's like <laughs> all the time on stage. I'm like, y'all want me to stop talking about white folks, but god dang, y'all keep being white folky. So can I also, there it is. Can I also add this? I've all and I'm not saying this because you're on the screen. I've always admired Jamel um because Jamel also used to live in Orlando. And she used yes. to, I think you were yeah. adjunct professor at UCF for a little bit, right? You used to write. I was, about, that is correct. Orlando Sentinel and all that. Shout out to the full seven, you know, our city and everything. And I just want to yes, say yes. salute to you. I've always admired Jamel and I've always loved everything you did from, from when you were at Orlando Sentinel to at ESPN and what you're doing now. So shout out to you. And I appreciate you so much for just taking the time to get on here on the show with me in a minute. Oh, no, thank you a lot. And I like Orlando will always hold a special place uh, in my heart. Like I loved living in that city. And it was, uh, even though so it doesn't awesome. necessarily have like a, a robust black population, like there's not no. like a huge <laughs> and we grew amount. In pocket, there's pocket, but it has grown. You're right, you're right. It has definitely grown, <laughs> but like everybody knew each other. Like it was a vibe, and just um, during that time, it was. I just had a blast, like working at the Sentinel, and then my first uh, seven years, I was at ESPN. I was still living there, and just going back and forth uh from orlando to bristol doing tv and 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 doing a bunch of different assignments for espn so i really really loved living there um so yeah orlando i have special affection for that place well shout out to the O. you know yeah, uh, yeah. i am a oh, graduate of dr phillips high school shout out to uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, i was like amanda, amanda went to that she went to that good orlando school that yeah, dr. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nickelodeon school right there. That's the Nickelodeon school. 
<laughs> Listen, we could see Hogwarts from the parking lot. It was very serious. It was very serious. Well, Jamel, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you again for coming to the show. Y'all get your book, get your copy of Uphill, wherever they sell books. The reason I had to ask you where can you get it is because when I when I wrote my book, people were like, where do I get a book from? And I was like, ah, why do y'all not know where to I get know. books from? Yeah, you can get books from Amazon. You can get books from Target, Walmart. You can get yes, books you can. From, uh, you, black even at the stores. airport, right? They're in the yes. airport. My book is in the airport. Yes, you can go to Barnes and Noble. Yeah, I everywhere. Actually, I actually realized that too, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know if that says something about me or where society is." Like, wow, we don't know where books are sold. We like, don't know where books at book are places. Sold. <laughs> at book places, what do they say? You know, if you want to hide something from somebody. Put it in a book. book. So go out yes. and get uphill. Jamel, thank you so much for joining us. And we can't wait to have you back to share your thoughts again on some other. All right. Thank you guys. Situations. <laughs> Later.